Hi, everybody. This is Jack Shaw, your Sports Vision sportscaster with the 1952 Pacific Coast Conference highlights. The outstanding plays and players of the past season. In the last few months, we've seen some great football played here on the Pacific Coast among the nine schools making up the conference. On this day, as a finale to a wonderful football season, we would like to bring you not only football highlights, but we also want to salute each school, institutions all of outstanding football teams and educational achievements. Let's briefly visit each of the nine schools making up the Pacific Coast Conference. And our first stop is Moscow, Idaho, home of the University of Idaho. At Neal Stadium, at the beginning of the 52 season, head coach Babe Kerfman and his coaching staff began a tough schedule with a young squad of Vandals. One of Kerfman's returning lettermen was Bob Holder, a senior guard and a team captain. The young Vandal squad started slow, but ran over Montana and Oregon State at the end of the season. A hard-running quarterback on the Vandal squad was junior Larry Hart. Here he breaks over right tackle for a nice run and 25 big yards. <laughs> Alternating with Hart in the quarterback spot was Wayne Anderson. On this play, the senior from Spokane rolls up 17 yards for the Vandal. Junior halfback Dick Pickett supplied the power in the backfield. Here he gets those six tough yards up the middle to score for the Idaho squad. Besides a running attack, the Vandals came up with a sharp shooting aerial combination. This time, Wayne Anderson zeroes in on N. Jerry Ogle, and it's good for 12 yards. Here, Anderson and Ogle click again for another 15 yards. By the end of the season, Idaho had the best kickoff return average of the conference, 23 and 2 tenths yards. And the Vandals are set for a spoilers roll in 53. Preseason favorites to win the Pacific Coast Championship were Coach Howie O'Dell's aerial-minded Huskies. The Washington Pack was topped by UCLA and USC. But the Huskies wound up with the season's total offensive mark of 339 and 1 tenths yards per game. Coach Howie O'Dell has produced three All-American backs while he's been at Washington. This season, junior Doug McClary was a top pass nagging end, while fullback Jack Nugent supplied the power. Then George Black pulled in 42 passes to become the conference number one receiver. Don Heinrich passed to a new conference record of 137 completions and became the nation's number one passer. Besides a deadly aerial attack, the Huskies were equally effective on the ground. In the Stanford game, fullback Jack Nugent breaks over left tackle for 13 yards and a Washington touchdown. Again on this play, it's Jack Nugent booming through SC's tough line to pick up 19 yards for the Huskies. The classiest aerial combination on the conference was Heinrich to Black. Let's watch them in action on this one as Heinrich fires and Black pulls it down and it's good for 13 yards. In the Stanford game, Heinrich and Black teamed up to roll up plenty of yardage. On this play, they click for 35 yards. Don Heinrich captured total offense honors with 1,652 yards, all but five of which were from passing. Here, Heinrich zeroes in on N. George Black, and it's good for a touchdown. Watch this play coming up as Heinrich unlimbers his pitching arm and rifles a long one to his target. N. George Black gathers it in and goes 80 long yards for a Husky TD. Senior fullback Sam Mitchell was a top ground gainer. Here he returns a Trojan punt for 66 yards and a touchdown, but later nullified by a penalty. Senior Don Heinrich is already in the armed forces and won't be back next year, but Coach Howie O'Dell has a pack of veterans ready for the 53 season. 
and the Huskies are waiting quietly for the big one. At Pullman, Washington, at the beginning of the season, Coach Al Kircher unleashed a squad of scrappy Cougars that had been hit hard by the loss of graduating Letterman. The Washington State aggregation was a young one, short on experience, but with lots of spirit. Coach Al Kircher began a major rebuilding effort around Bob Burkhardt, a 200-pound halfback, and junior halfback Jim Head. Two Cougar seniors were halfback Al Charlton and Dwight Poole, a 180-pounder from Walla Walla. Charlton and Poole made up a good ground-gaining attack. Watch number 80, Hal Lakovsek's block on this one as Al Charlton goes around left end. When the Cougars neared the opponent's end zone, they asked Dwight Poole to carry the ball. Here he breaks over right tackle and goes 10 yards to score. On this play, Poole again carries the mail. He finds an opening over right tackle and grinds out 14 yards for a Cougar touchdown. During the season, Terry Campbell developed into a top quarterback. Here Campbell hits and Bill Holmes and the pass scores a touchdown. Holmes, a junior, was one of the scrappiest receivers on this Cougar squad. Here he makes a great try for a pass in a play in which interference was later called. Here in the California game, it's Terry Campbell pitching again, and Harlan's Fair pulls it down and romps 76 yards for the touchdown. Top Cougar end during the season was senior Ed Barker, who took conference scoring honors with 44 points on four touchdowns, 14 conversions, and two field goals. The Cougar squad under coach Al Kircher has become a high-spirited, explosive aggregation and a major factor in the 53 race. The roar rumbling over Corvallis on October 4th came from the throats of thousands of Oregon State fans as Coach Kip Taylor's Beavers almost upset tough Michigan State. At Corvallis, Oregon this past season, a major rebuilding task was begun as Coach Kip Taylor tried to fill the gaps left by 20 graduating lettermen. Powerful fullback on the Beaver squad was 200-pound senior Sam Baker. In Jack Gotta developed into a pass-snagging end while quarterback Kay Booth was both a hard runner and a good passer. Defensively, the Oregon State Beavers were a rugged wall when the chips were down. Here they dig in with a nice defensive play to stop a touchdown drive. One of the best ground gainers in Oregon State history was Sam Baker. Watch him now as he blasts over right tackle and rolls upfield for 17 yards. When the Beavers needed a first down, they called on their line-busting fullback. Here is Baker again, breaking over right tackle for seven yards. On this next play, watch junior halfback Chuck Brackett pick out his target in M. Jack Gotta. Good for 11 quick yards. The combination of Brackett to Gata kept the air filled with yard-gaining passes. On this play, the two Beavers ring up a 28-yard gain. Another favorite target of Chuck Brackett was N. Clara Taylor. This time, Brackett pitches and Taylor catches, and it's good for 14 yards. Sam Baker will be graduating next spring, but Brackett, Gata, and Taylor will be back. Oregon State was second during the season with a punt average of 39.7 yards, and in 53, the Beavers can easily be the team to watch.
At Eugene, Oregon, Coach Len Casanova's Webfoots took the aerial route through their Pacific Coast schedule and wound up as the number one passing team in the conference. The University of Oregon squad captured the passing crown with 126 completions, averaging 172 yards a game. Coach Casanova began the season with a squad short on veterans. But Farrell Albright, a sophomore, turned into an outstanding halfback. Pass-throwing sophomore quarterback George Shaw completed 55 aerials during the season, while veteran Hal Dunham was also holding down the quarterback spot. Let's watch the two Webfoot sophomores in action on this play as George Shaw rifles a pass complete to Farrell Albright, and it's good for 24 yards. A pass nagging in for the Ducks was Enron Lineman. Here he feels a pass, and it's good for nine more yards. And Mounty Breathauer caught 41 passes during the season to give him the second highest number of catches in the conference. On this play, he pulls down a pass that netted 10 yards. This time, it's a scoring play for the Oregon Ducks as Shaw again passes to Ron Lineman. It's the culmination of a touchdown drive, 59 yards in eight plays. In the California-Oregon game with this play, Shaw set a new conference record for passes completed in one game. Along with his passing record, Oregon also had the third best passing defense, 128 yards per game. Watch the Ducks in 53. California's Golden Bears boom through their first few games of their schedule to put them on the inside track to the Rose Bowl. Then they lost three in a row to USC, UCLA, and Washington. But California still finished with the top record in rushing and total offense. Coach Pappy Waldorf fielded a squad of hard-running backs with senior quarterback and top ball handler Billy Mays and ground-gaining halfback Don Johnson. Johnny Oshevsky became the conference leading rusher with 845 yards. On this play with California playing College of Pacific, it's Billy Mays faking a handoff and then passing to end Hal Ellis. It's a 54-yard touchdown play. In the Stanford game, the Golden Bears came up with another passing combination. Here, quarterback Ray Wilsey fires one to end Bob Beal, who turns it into a California touchdown. Quarterback Ray Wilsey was a ground gainer as well as a pass pitcher. Here he drops back to pass and then decides to run, picking up plenty of yardage. <laughs> Fullback Johnny Oshevsky broke the three-year conference record for ground gaining with 2,504 yards. In the Oregon game, Johnny O breaks loose and rolls up 70 long yards to score. Third leading rusher in the conference this season was Bill Powell with 647 yards. With Johnny O blocking on this play in the Missouri game, Powell rambles 49 yards for a California touchdown. Then in a play of the California-Minnesota game, it was Powell doing the blocking for halfback Don Johnson. Johnson races 84 yards and another six points. But it was in the UCLA game where Johnson really rolled up yardage. Watch him take the kickoff on his own two-yard line and go all the way. California's punt return average of 10 and 4 tenths yards was the second best in the past season. The Bears are losing Oshevsky, Powell, Mays, and Johnson next spring. But the Bears have a new crop of promising material, and they can be counted on to provide plenty of fireworks in 53. At Palo Alto, the Stanford Indians, champions of the 1951 Pacific Coast Conference, began the season ready to defend their crown. 
but the Indians were lacking in depth and a series of injuries softened up their scoring punch. Coach Chuck Taylor came up with an outstanding linebacker in fullback Chuck Asijan, the 198-pound senior from Los Angeles. Junior quarterback Bob Garrett sparked the Indian squad, while Olympic champion Bob Mathias provided speed and power. In the Washington game, Garrett completely fools the defense as he bootlegs around left end for a touchdown. In this pass play, quarterback Jack Gubbard pitches to John Steinberg, and it's good for 18 yards. During the season, Stanford was the first team to score against USC through the air. This is the play as Gebert passes to end Sam Morley in the end zone. Now it's quarterback Bob Garrett tossing to Steinberg. Good for 38 yards and a touchdown. Stanford averaged 178 and two tenths rushing yards per game during the season, while Mathias rolled up 653 yards, rushing in 52. In the UCLA game, it's Bob Garrett tossing to halfback Bill Rogers, who feels it and rambles 62 yards to score. Another top pass receiver on the Stanford squad was Sam Morley with 40 catches, third highest in the conference. In 53, one of Coach Taylor's major tasks will be to fill the gaps left by graduating Letterman next spring. At Los Angeles, crafty coach Red Sanders brought out a rough Bruin squad that rumbled through the conference race. As the season progressed, the UCLA Bruin rolled on undefeated, and the Westwood gang seemed headed for the Rose Bowl. Then UCLA lost the big one to USC. Coach Red Sanders came up with a rugged and explosive squad. With pass pitching and hard running, halfback Paul Cameron sparking the offense. An All-American Don Mumma on the defensive squad. Senior guard Ed Flynn was the bulwark of the Bruin line. UCLA's fullback Bill Stitz intercepted eight passes and returned 235 yards for a new conference record. Watch Stitz on this play in the Stanford game intercept a pass and ramble for 58 yards. In the Wisconsin game, it was Bill Stitz intercepting a Badger pass and running it back 24 yards for a Bruin score. During the season, the UCLA squad intercepted 34 enemy passes to lead the conference. On this play, also in the Wisconsin game, watch senior halfback Joe Sable take the punt and return it 40 yards for a touchdown. of 94 and one-tenth yards per game, UCLA had the number one rushing defense. And with Paul Cameron, they also had an outstanding passer. Here in the SC game, he zeroes in on halfback Don Stalwick for a nice game. On this play, Cameron stays on the ground and rambles around right in for some quick yardage. Senior Teddy Narleski also developed into a sharp shooting halfback. In the Bruins' clash with Rice, Narleski pitches to end Ike Jones. Good for 21 yards and a touchdown. Also in the California game, the Narleski-Jones combination clicked with deadly accuracy. Narleski pitches, Jones takes it, and it's another six points for UCLA. One of the Bruins' top pass-snagging ends was Ernie Stocker. In the Rice game, he pulls down Narleski's pass and rambles 52 long yards. 
Along with UCLA's passing attack, the squad also had the conference second best pass defense, allowing 122 and 9 tenths yards per game. The Bruins lost only one game this season, and 53 may well find them again in the championship race. Football fans watched Los Angeles with lots of interest this season as Coach Jess Hill brought out a thundering aggregation of Trojans. As the weeks went by, the big and tough SC squad rolled over its opponents one by one to finally beat UCLA for the conference crown. Coach Jess Hill fielded a high-scoring squad with All-American Elmer Wilhoyt, the key defensive man. Another outstanding linebacker was George Timberlake. While Jimmy Sears was second in the conference with 1,033 offensive yards. Southern California retained its total defense honors for a second straight year, allowing only 177 and 6 tenths yards a game. Here in the Stanford game, watch Marvin Goo intercept and turn it into a touchdown. The Trojans had the best pass defense of the conference, allowing but 66 and 8 tenths yards a game. Here, Dick Nunes intercepts a Washington pass and returns it for 55 big yards. <laughs> Trojan Jim Saltis won the conference interception title with nine catches. Here he pulls down a Washington State pass and rambles upfield for 55 yards. Southern California also set another conference mark when it returned punts for 827 yards. In the Notre Dame clash, Al Hoagie Carmichael returns an Irish punt to the one-yard line, although the play was called back because of a penalty. SC's punt return average was the best in the league, and three of SC's 60 returns went for touchdowns. Here, Jim Sears returns a California punt for 69 yards and a Trojan touchdown. Another ground-gaining Trojan was fullback Leon Sellers. On this play, he breaks over the center of Notre Dame's line for 15 quick yards. In the Stanford game, watch Sellers blast through the line and ramble for 52 yards. Besides a classy runner, halfback Jim Sears was also a nifty passer. On this play in the UCLA game, Sears pitches to end Ron Miller, and it's good for 22 yards. In the Notre Dame game, Jim Sears really unlimbered. Watch him now on this play as he draws a bead on end Jim Hayes and fires way down the field. Another speedster on the Trojan squad was sophomore halfback Lyndon Crow. In the Northwestern game, Crow finds a fast track around the left end and he races 60 yards for another Trojan touchdown. Finally, here's the play that helped put the Trojans of Southern California into the Rose Bowl. 
In the clash with UCLA, Al Carmichael laterals to Jimmy Sears, and Sears prints 70 yards to score. The annual Rose Bowl Classic between the University of Southern California and the University of Wisconsin promises to be one of the greatest football classes of the year. Coach Jess Hill has come up with not only a championship squad, but also a team that broke many existing conference records. And now, as the 1952 football season has come to an end, and as a sudden quietness envelops the many stadiums, the record books are being closed on the season's greatest plays and players. It's been one of the greatest seasons in the history of the Pacific Coast Conference, a league made up of nine schools that have achieved national prominence in both athletic and educational achievements. Today, reluctantly, we come to the end of our Pacific Coast Conference highlights and the end of a great football season.